Hello and welcome to Mr. Barton's Gapminder World video number two. Now last week we looked at how to access the site and how to use some of its more basic functions and this week we are going to have a look at how we can use Gapminder World to investigate the link between um, how well off a country is and how healthy its inhabitants are. So this is the kind of default setup for Gapminder World with life expectancy on the y-axis and income per person on the x-axis. Now before we do anything it's important that the students understand what these two measures actually are. So life expectancy, if we just hover over here, is actually the amount of years you'd expect a newborn child to live if they were born in a given year, so in this case 2009. And income per person is important because it's inflation adjusted. So this is based on 2005 prices. So it's not just a case that prices are going up so um, wages have to go up to match this is actual purchasing power so that's important to emphasize to the students okay so that's what our world looks like and if I in 2009 and if I hover over there that's all your Europe and Central Asian countries and down there is all your sub-Saharan African countries and we can talk about why it's better for a country to be top right than bottom left and so on and I think a good way to start this investigation is to say to the students, what do you think the world looked like 200 years ago, so in 1800? And, whilst, and after they've had a chance to think and suggest their ideas on that one, we can just drag the slider back to 1800, and we can see that the world was a much more kind of compact place there. We've still got huge levels of inequality. If I highlight there, the United Kingdom, life expectancy of 40 and uh, income per person 2,700, and then countries down here such as Solomon Islands and Angola. Right, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to highlight three countries. I'm going to go for China, so if we just find those there. I am going to go for Rwanda, and we're going to go for the United Kingdom. Okay, and what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to hit play, and I'm going to see what happens to the, these countries over the first kind of 40 years. So if I hit play... And we can see that China seems to be moving to the left. Rwanda, not too much movement. And the UK is moving kind of up and down, up and down. Now, for the kind of key years, I find it quite useful to just use the scrolling function because it gives me a bit more control. So for these next few years, just keep your eye on China. And let's have a look what happens here. So China starts to move bottom left quite significantly. And in 1855, life expectancy is only 27 now, if I just speed things up a little bit, look how long it takes China to recover. If we go to, say, 1910, so just past the turn of the century, China's still not quite back to the level it was 110 years ago. If we have a look at Rwanda, Rwanda's income per person is going up, but life expectancy still seems to be fixed around this 32 mark. I'll just move these labels out of the way so we can see a bit clearer. And the United Kingdom is starting its movement towards the top right. Now, we're reaching a key point in the United Kingdom's development here, so watch what happens as we enter the First World War. So look at the effect that has on life expectancy. In just one year it drops down there to a life expectancy of 40. But what's also quite interesting is how quickly the United Kingdom recovers and also how little impact it seems to have on Rwanda and China. Okay? Right, let's keep going a little bit because we're quite short of time here. Now look at China there, what's happening. Well, let's pause it here for a second, because we've got the Second World War. It's not had quite as big an effect um, on the life expectancy of the United Kingdom, but it has had a significant effect on the finances of the country, which is quite interesting. And look at China. China has moved right over here. Life expectancy has gone up, as it has in Rwanda, but income per person is back now down to levels that it was at around about 120 years ago. Now, I want to kind of end on two points here, and one that really shocked my students. If I just fast forward here, keep your eye on Rwanda now. So we're keeping going, and Rwanda's development is mixed. Again, we've got China, all sorts is going on there. But if I just keep going in Rwanda, and I pause when we get, look at that. Look at Rwanda there. In just one year, when the mass genocide happens, life expectancy falls right down there to around about 26, 27. And my students just found that absolutely shocking that that could happen. And this, the kind of statistics really brought it home. If I just bring things forward, again, it's quite interesting to look at China. China seems to be catching us, catching the UK. And that's no surprise there that people are saying China's the next world superpower because if it follows that trend, it's going to be overtaking us fairly soon. That's all for now. Bye-bye.